Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. We tend to think of jet aircraft as powerful, high-tech machines, and they are. However, many of us forget just how sensitive some of the components of these weapons of war can be. Perhaps the most important example is jet intake. In order to reach the fantastic speeds at which jets travel, these massive turbine engines must take in incredible amounts of air, which they then compress into thrust. Should anything other than air enter the turbine, however, it could do millions of dollars in damage or even lead to a crash and fatality. That can be anything from nuts and bolts, screws, trash, soda cans, anything that can be ingested into an intake of an aircraft or by the uh, exhaust shot across the flight deck causing damage to equipment, injury to, or even death to personnel. This is known as foreign object debris, and it's something that the U.S. Navy and Air Force take very seriously. In the case of the Navy, flight crews, maintenance personnel, and fuelers are all working with very limited space. While four and a half acres is huge by ship standards, it is still barely enough room to fit all the aircraft, personnel, and equipment required to operate a flight deck. With so much going on at once, foreign object debris, or FOD, is a major concern that requires constant vigilance. This starts with frequent FOD walks. These are completed, at a minimum, before each launch and recovery cycle. This can amount to several times a day, depending on the aircraft carrier's current mission. It can be as simple as that. You get ingested into a, an aircraft intake and cause that engine to, to go down. The procedure for an FOD walk is to gather all available personnel, regardless of rank or duty, have them form a line, several rows deep, and walk slowly from one end of the flight deck to the other. They are required to scan for all debris, no matter how small, picking up and turning in whatever they find. To understand the importance of FOD walks, one must understand just how crowded the average carrier flight deck is. Most modern U.S. carriers include one takeoff and one recovery area. The decks consist of an angled landing strip, which meets the port bow at an area called the crotch, and four catapults that help launch planes into the air. Behind these catapults are jet blast deflectors, or JBDs, which keep personnel safe from jet engine exhaust. All of these areas are protected by foul lines, which are dotted lines that should not be crossed during specific operations. With constant maintenance, refueling, and foot traffic, protocols and procedures must be followed to the letter to make sure people and objects are in the right place at all the right times. Crap here in a sec. Oh, we'll do it. 
Due to the sheer power of jet intake engines, one misplaced bolt or other small item could damage a plane and put the pilot's life at risk. In the case of civilian airports, you not only have a much larger area to cover, but many more lives at stake in the event of an FOD mishap. At a busy airport like O'Hare International in Chicago, some 900,000 planes will take off and land every year, the majority of the jet aircraft with particularly high-powered engines. Of course, there are thousands of airfield personnel at work throughout this time as well, each with their own equipment, vehicles, and personal items spread over more than 7,000 acres. As you might expect, these logistical problems necessitate a completely different approach to prevent FOD. The first and most common anti-FOD approach relies on special vehicles known as airfield sweepers. Pulled by a car, truck, or other vehicle, these consist of a rectangular set of brushes that feature specifically formulated aerothane blades. The design of these sweepers is so precise that they can collect everything from nuts and bolts to loose gravel and sand. The fact that they can travel at high speeds makes them a very practical option for most commercial airports. More recently, the FAA has started testing new, more high-tech methods of detecting and dealing with FOD. In Boston, they use a product called FODetect, which is made up of radar and camera units that scan the runway surface constantly. If FOD is detected, an alarm will be sounded and a video image will be provided so that the FOD can be quickly removed. In San Diego, they use the FOD Finder, a mobile detection system mounted on the roof of a vehicle that can quickly detect small surface irregularities with radar. While FOD is definitely a major problem for all aircrafts, civilian airports are also tasked with preventing bird strikes and runway excursions. Bird strike, of course, takes place when low-flying birds are sucked into the engine intake or propeller, causing significant damage to the engines in the process. Preventing bird strikes starts with removing nesting areas like trees and shrubs and covering any nearby ponds with netting. Most airports also use sonic cannons and noise generators to regularly scare birds away. Lastly, you have runway excursions. This is when a landing plane fails to stop due to slippery conditions, wind, or equipment failure. Obviously, should the plane go off the runway, both the people aboard and any people or property in the path would be at serious risk. To compensate for this problem, many airports have created excursion zones, which are elongated sections of runway to give the plane more room to stop. Some airports are investing in special arrestor systems, like the Engineered Materials Arresting System, which features a high-energy absorbing material that collapses under the weight of the plane, bringing it to a stop. Mm -hmm. 
As you can see, there are always risks in operating aircraft. Fortunately, both practical and technological procedures are being employed every day to keep pilots and passengers safe. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.